Welcome to the Octave tutorial number 5, Control Statements. In this video we'll be looking at getting a grasp on the control statements that Octave has to offer. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. If you have ever worked with another programming language before, this will probably be very familiar for you. Control statements allow us to have the computer make a decision based on a boolean value of either true or false. The two control statements that we have in Octave is selection being if statements and rep repetition which is the for and while loops. Whenever we need the computer to decide if something is true or false, we use comparison operators. Once again, if you're familiar with another programming language, most of these should be familiar. We have is equal to, which is two equal signs, is not equal to, which is a tilde equal sign. You can also use the exclamation mark equal, I believe. Uh, the greater than sign, so this is for greater than, and less than, which is the less than sign. And we have greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. If you're new to this kind of comparison, it's okay, you'll pick it up as you're using it. Okay, let's look at the if statement. The if statement will use a boolean expression. This is usually one of the comparison operators we just talked about. If the comparison is true, then the code inside the if statement is run. Otherwise, if the comparison is false, the code is skipped. We can see here how the if statement is laid out in Octave. The brackets around the expression is optional. Let's jump over to Octave and write a simple if statement. Okay, so in Octave, let's set a variable x to equal 6. Now let's write our if statement. So if x, so our variable x, is greater than 5, comma, and the comma is used to, uh, to indicate that we're done with our if declaration, and you'll see that our prompt changes when we hit enter to a single arrow. This is our indent, so this means that we're inside our if statement and we can tell the uh, the if statement what code to run if it's true. So if x is greater than uh, 5, we're going to display, so disp x is larger than 5 exclamation mark. And we can put a semicolon on the end here. Now when we hit enter, you see that we've still got that indent, so that we're, we're still inside our if. To get out of our if, we have to use the end uh, command. So end uh, will close off our if, and because we're inside octave, it will also uh, run the if statement. So because our x equals 6, x is greater than 5, so it will display x is larger than 5. So if we enter, we get the output x is larger than 5. So that's our if statement in uh, working. Okay, so now let's uh, jump back over to the slideshow. We can add more control to our if statements by making use of the else if and else statements as well. The else if allows us to chain together another if statement if the first if statement is false. The if, uh, if all of the ifs and else ifs are all false, then the else statement uh, can be used to run code. As we can see with the example setup, if an expression is true, then do something. Else, if another expression is true, then do something else. Otherwise, do the code in the else function. Let's modify our previous if to make use of the else if and else statements. Okay, so if we come back over to octave, and our x equals 6, remember? Now, we can do if x is greater than 10, comma, then we're going to display x is larger, oh, we'll go, is bigger this time, is bigger than 10, exclamation mark. Now we can, now that we've uh, determined our display, we can do our else if. So, else if and then we do x is greater than 0, comma, and we're still indented. We're going to display x is greater than 0, but less than 10. 
exclamation mark. Now let's write our else. So else, and we don't need a comma for the else. We're going to display x is a negative exclamation mark. And then we're going to write our end. End. And whoop, I've got a error. So if not defined for class char. What's this? Or have I mucked up? Oh, I wrote, I totally wrote display. My bad. Uh, so if x is larger than 10, then we're going to do x is bigger than 10. Else if is larger than 0, we're going to display uh, that x is larger than 0 but less than 10 exclamation mark Oop, already got that in there and then our else which is going to be uh, x is a negative end now as you can see it outputs x is larger than 0 but less than 10 so it skipped our first if because uh, x is not larger than 10 but it caught it in the else if, which is, is x larger than zero. So yes, it was. So it ran the code inside that if, which was the display x is larger than zero, but less than 10. So that's how we can use uh, else ifs and elses to determine what happens uh, in an if statement. Okay, so let's jump back to the slides. Okay, now we can move into onto repetition statements. First, we will start with the for loop. The for loop will repeat a block of code a specific number of times. For loops are great when you know exactly how many times you need to repeat something. In Octave, the for loop can loop over any vector. This example shows the syntax of a for loop in Octave that iterates 10 times. Let's try the for loop in Octave and we'll print out the current index to screen. Okay, so we come over to Octave and we'll clear the screen. Now we can do for i equals whoop, for i equals 1 to 10 comma and then you see we get our indent again. Now inside our indent what we're going to do is we want to display. So we're going to display and we're going to display uh, s print f. So we're going to do a format printed string and inside that string inside sprintf we're going to do percent i so this is for an integer and then next to the i we're going to do th so for the ith and then we're going to do a space and then index now that percent i will be replaced with a number so we'll close that quote off comma and then we want to pass i into the sprintf okay and then we'll put a semicolon on the end there. And now we're still indented, so we use our end uh, function, our end statement. Now when we run this, it's going to iterate uh, 10 times, from uh, 1 to 10, and it's going to print out each index. So hit enter, and you see we get 1th index, 2nd, 2th uh, index, 3rd, 3th uh, index, 4th uh, index, 5th index, 6th index, 7th index, etc. And that's how we set up for loops. Okay, so now that we know the for loop, let's move on to the while loop. So this, unlike the, the for loop, is great for tasks where we don't know exactly how many times we'll have to loop over some code. The while expression uh, is true, repeat, uh, while the expression is true, repeat the code until the expression is false. Be careful with while loops. You can if you can never reach a false comparison, the loop will go on infinitely forever. If you do uh, if you do accidentally create an infinite loop, just close Octave and try again. Let's write a while loops uh, similar to our for loop. Okay, so we'll come over to Octave again. And this time we're going to use the keyword while. So actually before this we need to set up a, a value for i. So we'll set i to equal 1. 
Okay, so while i is less than 10, comma, and we get our indent, so while i is less than 10, we're going to display i. So disp i. Now, we also need to remember to uh, increment our i value so that it does eventually get larger than 10. So i equals i plus 1. And now we can do our end statement. And as you'll see, we'll get one one to nine this time because i eventually becomes ten. Uh, ten is not less than ten; it's the same. Okay, so we'll just clear screen quickly again. Now, if we come back over to our PowerPoint, sometimes we may need to break out of our loops early if a certain condition is met. For this, we have break statements. Break statements will stop the loop controlling the current block of code. Let's have a quick look at one in action. Okay. So let's have a variable n, which will equal 1. So while true, so we're going to use oh, true, we're going to use the value true. So it will always be true. So this loop will go on forever. What we're going to do is we're going to get a variable v and make it equal to v plus n. Okay, now if uh, n is greater than 4, comma, so we have an if statement inside our while, if n is greater than 4, we're going to break. And that's a keyword, we put a colon on the end. So we want to end that if, and then outside of our if, we want to set n to equal n plus 1, so that we eventually uh, reach uh, n greater than 4. And now we're going to end our uh, while loop, so end again. And as you can see, it's run our while loop, but we're not displaying anything, so it ran it in the background. So let's type v and see what value v is. So if you remember, v is equal to v plus n. So we type v, you can see that we get our uh, four values, which isn't quite right because I didn't set v up before. So, oh, that's a bugger. Uh, you were supposed to, I was supposed to create v next to n. So see I've got n plus one, uh, n equals one. I was also supposed to do v equals one. Whoops. We'll quickly uh, redo this while so while true uh, v equals n if n is greater than four then we're going to break and then we want to end out of this and then n plus n plus uh, n equals n plus one and then we're going to end again okay now that ran again now if we Look at v, v equals 16. So, because we iterated four times and v started off as one, then it was plus n, so it was two, and then etc. Keep the looping through. So, that's how we set up our break statements inside our whiles. Okay. This concludes our look at control statements in Octave. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Next we're going to look at combining everything we have learned so far to construct octave functions. Thanks for watching.